Hey guys, welcome back to Heiko's Garage. Today we're going to build another Seiko homage. I know, clone, fake, homage. Seiko has stopped making the SKX a few years back. There are still a few brand new ones available here and there. It costs quite a bit of money. I would recommend you just make your own. I think a lot of people have an issue with fakes when people start selling them and pretending that they are the real deal. I'm not trying to cheat anyone out of their money. I'm not trying to sell a, a homage to the SKX as the real deal. I'm just making one for myself. In this case, it's actually going to be a gift for a family member who's not going to be named. It's a secret. Don't tell anyone. So another homage. The dial is going to say Seiko and it's going to look like an SKX. It's my interpretation of it. Uh, we're going to use a titanium case and a titanium bracelet and uh, a couple AliExpress parts. There's also going to be a Seiko NH36 movement, a day date complication NH movement in there. Um, and I hope you, you're going to like it. I like the final product and I hope you like it too. I will leave some links to all the products that I'm using down in the description so you can maybe assemble your own. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, so we have all the bits and pieces assembled. Here's the titanium case, all nicely brushed all the way around. No polished surfaces on titanium, I guess. It has a white chapter ring, which I really like. Here's the set of hands. And there is the NH36 movement uh, with date, date complication. Made it in one piece from China, that's good. And it also comes with an extra long stem, which we will need later. And here it goes into my uh, movement holder that's specific to the Seiko NH line of movement. So 34, 35, 38, they all fit into that thing. See the day-date complication on the day wheel. You see two languages, that's English and Chinese. I was looking for English and German, but I don't think they make that. Uh, there is Spanish and there's yep, Japanese available, but Chinese and English is what I got. The dial that I have, dark blue with a very strong starburst effect, the typical SKX kind of design with printed indices, has two sets of dial feet on the back and we have to cut off the correct ones. You can use this dial in uh, a three o'clock crown position or a 3.8 o'clock crown position. And I double and triple checked a few times using my flush cutters, cutting the uh, feet off that we don't need. And then you gotta make sure it's cut off flush or else the dial will not sit down all the way on the movement. So that took me a little bit to nibble that off. And then we, are finally able to put the dial onto the movement. It goes into the movement retainer ring. It's plastic on the outside. And uh, please make sure you don't push down your dial with your bare hands. Wear gloves or finger cuts. So then we're setting the date so that it just clicks over. That's 12 o'clock midnight. And that's where you want to leave it. I should have not pushed the stem back in because then the movement potentially keeps running which is not good and I will admit I installed the hands three times I was never happy how it turned out so first you do the hour hand then the minute hand they are relatively simple to get onto their uh, pinions they're pretty large holes at the end of the hands but then the second hand is a, a little bit more tricky the pinion is really tiny and the second hand actually has a tiny little tube installed and that needs to fit over the pinion. The second hand position isn't really that crucial. You can put it on in any direction, but the hour and minute hand have to be pointing at 12 o'clock exactly when the date wheel clicks over to the next day. If you don't get that just right, it's just gonna be a little annoying to look at it when uh, you reach 12 o'clock and it's still on the previous day's date. So those two go on pretty easily. I had to pull it off because the lineup with 12 o'clock and the clicking over of the date wheel just never 
lined up perfectly. You got to make sure you push them down straight that you get the hand parallel to the surface of the dial and that the hands are parallel to each other and that they are not canted left or right. So you can install them crooked in multiple different levels. But you want to get it all parallel and straight. That's why I constantly keep looking from all kinds of directions. And of course you don't want to bend them in the process either. They are all pretty thin material. You don't want to scratch them. That's why I use uh, tweezers that have plastic tips. And of course the hand installers also have a nylon or plastic end on them. So click over to the next date. That's supposed to happen right there. And yeah, the, the first two times I wasn't happy how that turned out. Now we're using some Rodico. That's the universal putty for the watchmaker to pick up dirt, dust, uh, maybe too much lubricant. Or you can also install hands with it. Some people stick the hand into Rodico and then use the Rodico to um, hold the hand while installing it. I'm using the plastic tipped tweezers I got off of AliExpress. Highly recommend. They are like $3 with free shipping or maybe $4 shipping, I don't know. Uh, made by Ventus. They have just the right amount of spring tension and uh, the tips are nice and parallel and pointy and uh, for hand installation they're just great. The next ones I'm gonna try out are the ones with bamboo tips and see how those work. They are just a little bit more expensive. So yeah, uh, the pinion very small. Of the second hand pinion is really thin. Uh, don't overdo it, don't force it, don't bend it or else you can really throw the movement away. Uh, the hands also are very thin. You can easily bend those too. So go slow. If it doesn't work out, just get up, walk away for a moment, take a breather. So now it's running already. Um, I'm just checking if uh, everything looks parallel and straight. And then I eventually will get uh, all the hands to stop at 12 o'clock position to see if the hands are all parallel to each other and not interfere with each other. It's very important to check. So like that, and I pull the stem out. This NH36 has a hacking function, which stops the movement and all the hands. And again, checking from all directions. So I guess I was happy with that. Here's now the case crystal already installed chapter ring is installed the case back since it's all titanium um, it can be a little difficult to uh, screw that on titanium just like stainless steel they tend to um, cause I think it's called galling when the material just rubs each other up and 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 uh, destroys the threads so you got to be a little careful I'm cleaning the crystal from the inside not that I like to do that but someone left a fingerprint in there that's not good so you got to make sure that your crystal is clean once you have the watch together and then you find a piece of dust in there it's just not very good this is a sapphire crystal uh, with a little bit of AR coating, you can see that here occasionally a little bit of some blue sheen to it. Yeah, and then of course I didn't use um, watchmaker's tissue, but I used a microfiber rag, which then left some lint behind. And now I'm blowing it out and using my tweezers to pull all those little pieces of fuzz out of there. Now I'm taking the crown off. We're going to uh, need that later. Yeah, you got to make sure the inside of the watch is clean or else you're not going to be very happy at the end. And now the outside, of course, outside cleaning is really no problem, but it's sometimes really hard to tell is, is the smudge on the outside or is it on the inside? So now we're getting um, the movement out of the movement holder. You can just push it out. 
You can also put the movement with a dial and the hands upside down into this movement holder. It will not foul your hands. The opening in there is just as large as the opening is in the case. There's a little lever you have to push on, then you can pull the stem and the crown out. And now we just have to get the movement out of the holder. I intentionally didn't push it in all the way. Now, now you see me levering, leveraging it up a little bit. And then I just drop it onto my case cushion. Like that. And then we can put the case right over top of it. And again, I'm blowing it out one more time. Like that. Then we have to make sure the movement lines up with the position where the stem will come through the case. I keep flipping it back and forth so I can see it from the outside. And then of course uh, you need to push the movement into the case a little bit more. It's all just held in place by friction. And now I'm using a hand pusher that has a plastic tip to push the movement down into the case all the way. You want the dial to completely sit down on the chapter ring, the white chapter ring, and don't want to see a gap around it. That's why I check so many times. Pushing down a little more until it's seated all the way. But you don't want to do that until you're really sure that um, your movement is lined up with the crown position perfectly. So now we're sticking the stem and crown. You, you gotta turn it a little bit. I'm not doing that, that's why it's not sliding in nicely. So you gotta twist a little bit. Now I'm pulling it out again. Um, gotta make sure you have the crown tight on the stem. It gets screwed on. Always making the mistake not turning the crown while pushing it in. You got to do that. So then I put it into the all the way in position. Just got to make sure we have it all installed correctly. That's why I'm doing it so many times. It's like the OCD. And now we're measuring the distance between the backside of the crown and the end of that little tube sticking out of the case. Here, let me insert a little drawing for you. Sorry guys for the background noise. Uh, my whiteboard in my garage is right next to some water pumps for my uh, solar thermal system and my daughter's art collection on my whiteboard. So I just wanted to uh, explain how I measure the distance of the stem that I need to cut off. So here's uh, the case, the stem sticking out and it's sticking out six millimeters too far. So you're measuring between the backside of the crown and the tip of the tube that's sticking out of your case. And that applies to pretty much any screw down crown. So you stick it in, make sure it's all engaged with your movement, and then you, you measure, and in my case it was about six millimeters, and then uh, you wanna end up with this, so that the back side of the crown is pretty much right where the, the, the tip of that tube is. Uh, so no space in between at all. And um, that's where you need to get it. And then the, the springiness of the crown that you can push in and then, and then screw on is gonna be enough to uh, screw the crown all the way down. So from here to there. So now that we know how much material we have to cut off of the stem, uh, we can take it out of the movement one more time, remove the crown. And now I'm just gonna set my caliper back to the six millimeters. Here, let me show you. Six millimeters is the gap. I'll line it up in between, mark it with a Sharpie, and then I get my uh, cutters out. These are somewhat specific to cutting the watch stem. You can also use any other dikes or side cutters. Uh, these ones are just a little easier to make a uh, 90 degree cut or square cut uh, at the end of the stem. And then uh, we need to file the end down to clean up the threads. I first used a normal regular little 
file there, but that wasn't working. And then I ended up uh, getting uh, a set of fingernail files. They're like diamond fingernail files. They made pretty quick work out of it. I don't know why I'm holding this in my fingers because I do own a, a pin vise. You just gotta clean it up enough at the end, uh, put a little chamfer on the end until the crown screws on without cross-threading and without difficulty. And then of course you have to um, yeah, clean up after yourself. Don't leave, leave any metal shavings around. And uh, you also have to check one more time. So I explained in this little drawing that you want the back side of the crown to be sitting pretty much right where the tube, the threaded tube starts. And here in this case, I guess we were a little long. And so I removed this whole thing one more time, took the crown off and then uh, filed it shorter a little bit. Uh, so you rather cut it off a little long and then file it down until it's just so, until it's just perfect. You don't want to accidentally cut it too short because then, you know, then your project comes to a standstill. Then you have to order another stem and wait for that as well, unless you have already 20 of those lying around at home. Definitely want to get a nice 45 degree chamfer on there. fingernail file actually worked surprisingly well. And now finally I got my pin vise out. It was sitting in front of me the entire time. It's much easier. Get your fingers out of the way. You have a little bit more control. And it's also easier to um, screw the crown onto the stem and get it tight. Most people put a drop of red Loctite on there so it doesn't come loose. I haven't done that yet because I'm not sure if uh, we're, we're done with filing it down. So you don't want to be too quick with gluing it on. And now the end of the crown lines up right with the end of the little threaded tube. So it's all perfect. And again, blowing of the dust, very important. You don't want to leave anything in there or you don't even want to get dust into it in the first place. Now I'm also using some Rodico to uh, some smudges, little dust particles lying on there. And I just don't want to close up the watch case with that stuff in there. Rodico is pretty uh, universal, very useful. A little bit of OCD. Nobody's ever going to see it. The next watchmaker that maybe repairs it. Like I said, this is going to be a gift for someone. So now here's the case back. I'm not super happy that there is Heimdallah branding on the back. Uh, so apparently Heimdallah has a SKX homage made out of titanium. And I just bought the case and the bracelet from them. Uh, I might take it off and sand it down and get rid of the branding altogether. We'll see. I'm using some silicone grease. Uh, I just take a screwdriver tip amount of uh, silicone grease out of this huge tub and then just run it through my fingers and spread it out on the gasket. You can get uh, containers that have a sponge inside with silicone grease and then you just put the gasket in and it applies uh, a fine amount of silicone grease. But um, so overpriced. And then I changed my finger cards without silicone grease on them. Put the gasket in there. Make sure you're not um, pinching the gasket when you put the case back on. Of course you want to clean the case back as well. Last minute dusting. And um, yeah, the material titanium to titanium is a little on the rough side. I, I felt tempted to put some never seize or anti seize on there, but I didn't. You guys can rest assured I didn't. 
Then I just use my rubber ball to tighten it down as far as I can get it. They work pretty good on a um, waterproof watch or water resistant watch. You want to tighten it down maybe a little more. So my case spec tool comes out and tighten it up. And there it is. So movement hand style and case spec, everything is together. We cut the stem. Like I said, I haven't put a, a drop of Loctite on the crown yet, but it's easy to pull out and do that. Now I'm using some isopropyl alcohol to clean the inside surface there on the bezel because we have to put the bezel insert in. I actually like it that they didn't apply it from Heimdaller's factory uh, because now I can make sure that my bezel insert perfectly lines up with a chapter ring and the indices. Applying the uh, double-sided adhesive strip onto the bezel insert is a little bit of a chore. I'm also uh, going to clean the bezel insert with some isopropyl alcohol. Here's some watchmaker's tissue. That's the stuff you want to use around uh, watch parts and maybe even use it to clean um, crystals with some lens cleaner, for example. So rub it on there, make sure there are no fingerprints or oils or greases left so that we get a, the best chance of adhering this bezel insert on that watch. Yeah, it's it's uh, they they cut a ring out, but um, yeah, it's it's this whole piece and this stuff just sticks like hell to uh, the finger cuts. So eventually, you will see me take the finger cuts off because it was bugging me so much. And then lining that up so it's actually all the way around and centered. So and then I punch out the center section like that. Uh, it didn't come off all the way. Sorry for the camera not focusing, unfortunately. There's going to be a better lens in my future or in your future as well. A lot of people use manual focus. There we go. So now finally the camera caught up. Now we have the sticky ring on the back of the insert. And uh, now I'm just clicking it around making sure that the bezel is in a click position and not in between. It's a little on the rough side, by the way. I'm not super impressed with the bezel action there on this, on this watch. But you get what you pay for, right? AliExpress. Heimdallah. Heimdallah is supposedly um, giving it a European flair. I guess the name, brand name, some of those AliExpress brand names make absolutely no sense. All right, and there the paper comes hopefully off of this sticky ring. You only get one chance. You gotta get it on so that the markings on your bezel insert line up with your chapter ring or you're gonna be upset with yourself and then I wasn't sure this direction or that direction. So I'm holding it up in a pretty steep angle so that I can slide it around without the adhesive sticking yet. And then when I'm happy, I put it down and push it on, give it some pressure so that it really sticks to it. And then of course I have to do a test run, turn it around and see if it lines up. And another turn, you know, you never know. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. It lines up with a chapter ring. It doesn't look like here. The camera angle is a little obtuse from the side. And then the fingerprints need to come off. And now we're already at the point where we can put that stain, not stainless steel, uh, titanium bracelet on. It's nicely wrapped. I was able to leave the wrapping on and only remove the, the protective film from the female end links. They are solid, also titanium. That's pretty nice. 
I read somewhere there are different grades of titanium. Some are uh, more scratch resistant than others. This one I'm assuming is going to be, you know, the low budget titanium version. The female endlings, endlings fit pretty well. The pins they gave me, the spring bars, are the, the more robust, thicker version. I like that. So it's not those super skinny ones. Was a little fiddly to get the first one started. I might have accidentally shot one through the room. But then we eventually got it all lined up and clicked in position. without scratching up the case. That's the most important. If you're the watchmaker and you want to sell a watch or give it away as a gift, you better not have any scratches on there. That clickety click. Come on now. All right. And then now the other side and we're getting really close. This is a pretty long bracelet. I have a seven and a half inch wrist and this is much too long. So uh, I bet whoever I'm gonna gift this to will have to take a few links out of this. There it is, all put together. Um, I realized that I really never showed you guys the full function of the date, date, uh, day date complication. So when um, you get to midnight, it clicks over the date, but the day wheel is a little slower. It, it lags behind. So here it clicks over right at midnight, click. Uh, and then you see that the day wheel starts moving. So let me insert something here real quick. Hey guys, I didn't want to leave you hanging without showing the day date complications uh, way of working. Uh, pulled it out of the gift package one more time and put some finger cuts on. There we go. So we're close to midnight. So when the date clicks over is right when it, sh at least it should when, when the hour hand and the minute hand reach the 12 o'clock mark. So right there. And then I told you that the day complication, so it says Thursday will click over to Friday, uh, will take a couple hours. So the first hour is it switches to the second language. So this is apparently Friday in Chinese. Uh, let's think about this. Uh, this is a four. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That makes no sense. Anyways, that's Chinese for something. And then uh, it has to go uh, two more hours. And then suddenly it, while we were covering it up, it was switching to Friday there. Uh, maybe we can dial it back. Yeah, like there. So it takes about two more hours until the second language then shows up English again. So you're always uh, in limbo. The date has clicked over at midnight and the day complication clicks over um, a little later. This is the first time working with an NH36 with a day and date complication. I wasn't sure I looked it up and this seems to be normal. You guys, please uh, leave a comment down below if that's not the case, if maybe there's something wrong with the movement. So here we go. She's all together. Quick look around. All brushed surfaces, no polished surfaces. I guess uh, titanium doesn't lend itself to polishing really well. Unfortunately, the brushing on the bracelet doesn't really match the brushing on the case. I would be remiss if I wouldn't weigh the thing. So full length bracelet. I haven't taken any of the links out of it. And da 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 da. How much does it weigh? 127.09 grams. That's a pretty decent weight for a full-size diver with a full-length bracelet on it, so that's pretty good. So I also got a little um, watch case off of Amazon. I think it's real leather with some suede on the inside. This is gonna be a gift, as I mentioned, for a family member. I hope they don't hate they like it. Looks pretty good. The dark blue starburst effect with a white chapter ring. The red outline on the minute hand. There you go. 
should be nicely protected in this case, uh, making sure that there is no metal on the back side, so we're not scratching up things. And uh, with that case on, it will go back into the gift box. Pretty tight. There you go. A quick look at the starburst. A little close up for you guys. I will finish this out with a selection of some pictures that I took of the watch even outside and on the wrist so you get a good idea what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I will see you in the next one. You guys take care. Bye.